morning everyone i welcome you all for the next new lesson chapter 10 respiration in organisms so basically we all living organisms depend on food the food that we eat which is needed for all kinds of metabolic activities that we do it may be plant or animal every living organism does certain metabolic activities and all these metabolic activities for doing all these metabolic activities we need energy and that energy we get from food the food that we eat it may be of any form it may be in the form of carbohydrates or proteins or fats or vitamins or minerals is assimilated in our body which we have learned already in lesson 2 uh, there are various kinds of assimilations taking place in our body and one such is respiration where actually the meaning of respiration is where the food or the nutrient is converted into energy and with that energy only we are able to do all sorts of activities so in this lesson we are going to learn about respiration in organisms especially we are going to learn about respiration in human beings there are two types of respiration one uh, which we normally do all round the clock known as breathing and the second type called as cellular respiration so this breathing and cellular respiration are interdependent that is by the process of breathing we get oxygen and that oxygen is utilized for this second uh, type that is for cellular respiration in breathing we inhale air and uh, exhale carbon dioxide and water vapor during inhalation all kinds of gases enter into our lungs through the nostrils and uh, the oxygen alone is uh, absorbed by blood cells and in turn the remaining gases especially carbon dioxide along with some water vapor comes out and that we call it as exhalation inhalation breathing in and exhalation breathing out this process is also known as external respiration so what we learn you will learn again when you go to higher classes especially in 10th standard so concentrate and uh, observe each and every concept i said this uh, breathing is also known as external respiration because the respiration does not takes place inside the cell or in other words the respiration takes place outside the cell and so we call this as external respiration the second type of respiration is the name itself is cellular respiration this is called as cellular respiration because the re- this respiration takes place inside the cell or in the cell and so we call this as cellular respiration like uh, how we named uh, breathing as external respiration we can name cellular respiration as internal respiration okay external respiration is breathing 
where even though the respiration takes place inside the body it doesn't takes place inside the cell and so they are called as external external means outside okay external respiration and uh, cellular respiration or internal respiration S since it takes place in the cell it is called as cellular respiration since it takes place inside the cell it, which can also be called as internal respiration so in this lesson uh, we are going to deal with both breathing as well as cellular respiration with regard to this uh, cellular respiration so once when we breathe breathe in oxygen is uh, taken by the blood cells and they are carried to each and every cell found in our body and inside the cell we have a special organelle known as mitochondria and in that mitochondria you come across this second process cellular respiration what happens in cellular respiration that is uh, already we have this uh, nutrient especially glucose this glucose breaks to give energy this is actually cellular respiration uh, for this respiration we need oxygen and that's why we breathe the energy that we obtain from this glucose is used for the various different metabolic activities and for the activities that we do the activity may be just blinking our eyes or uh, sitting in a place or sight watching something or hearing music or it can be a very complicated uh, task like uh, solving a problem in a uh, system or uh, doing a hard manual work or doing a hard exercise so all this apart from that when we are sleeping inside our body we come across the functioning of lungs heart kidney spleen brain etc and all those for all these activities starting from the beginning till the end whatever all i said for all these activities we need energy and that energy is obtained from uh, cellular respiration actually breathing by breathing we get oxygen and that oxygen is utilized for the production of energy in cellular respiration next let us learn the two types of cellular respiration that is in most of the living organisms the respiration takes place in the presence of oxygen or in other words the respiration takes place only with the help of oxygen and those kinds of respiration are called as aerobic respiration aerobic respiration where respiration requires oxygen or respiration takes place only in the presence of oxygen whereas in certain microorganisms uh, the respiration takes place in the absence of oxygen and that second kind is called as anaerobic respiration aerobic respiration which takes place in the presence of oxygen and anaerobic respiration that takes place in the absence of oxygen so this anaerobic respiration uh, need not that uh, to be take, taking place only in microorganisms when you come across seed germination under the soil that also provides anaerobic condition and in that case uh, till the seed germinates the seed respires anaerobically that is in the absence of oxygen similarly some cases in our muscles we come across this anaerobic respiration when there is lack of oxygen in aerobic respiration glucose 
in the presence of oxygen is broken down into carbon dioxide water and energy the energy that is formed or produced is usually or mostly in the form of atp that is adenosine triphosphate so this atp is the richest source of energy there are different types of uh, energies like adp fad nad etc but atp okay uh, which is the richest source of energy and which is mostly produced during cellular respiration that to aerobic respiration whereas in anaerobic respiration the carbohydrate it may be glucose okay so example for carbohydrate is glucose the glucose molecule is broken down in the absence of oxygen into ethanol and carbon dioxide and less amount of energy is produced in anaerobic respiration in aerobic respiration more amount of energy is are produced but in anaerobic respiration less amount of energy is produced the reason behind this is in aerobic respiration complete oxidation takes place that is the glucose molecules are fully broken down into so glucose molecule is an organic compound okay so that uh, glucose organic compound is fully broken down into carbon dioxide water and energy that is atp co2 carbon dioxide h2o water and energy in the form of atp molecules whereas in anaerobic respiration the glucose or any form of carbohydrates in the absence of oxygen they are partially broken down and thereby giving a, a three molecule compound or a five molecules compound for example they produce they may produce ethyl alcohol or lactic acid and since partially the glucose is broken down only less amount of energy is produced in anaerobic respiration which is actually sufficient for those uh, tiny microorganisms okay uh, with regard to this anaerobic respiration i want to add certain points that is anaerobic respiration are also known as fermentation so this fermentation which we come across in many uh, places many uh, circumstances for example um, in a shop maybe let me start with the bakery where the cakes buns breads are made by fermentation secondly uh, in some other uh, hotels where we come across uh, this yeast is added to make the batter ferment similarly uh, you come across uh, for making of curd uh, the bacteria named lactobacillus is added to milk and that converts the milk into curd and thirdly finally even at our own home where we come across our mother without uh, your knowledge uh, inoculating uh, certain bacteria found in her hand in the batter it may, i mean uh, none other than itli or dosa batter and uh, which is not uh, a harmful process but uh, all this cases where fermentation helps in making the batter soft and uh, um, delicious to some extent for the persons who consume with regard to this uh, bakeries you come across this cakes buns breads which are very soft and you also come across holes in these uh, uh, cakes buns uh, breads the reason for this is fermentation that is during fermentation carbon dioxide and alcohol are produced where alcohol gives the softness to the uh, those uh, uh, bakery items 
and the carbon dioxide escapes from the batter when it is baked and that causes the or the reason for the holes found in the cakes uh, breads buns etc so which means in our home in dosa or idli you come across holes and that uh, holes is also due to fermentation so whenever when mama uh, grinds uh, this uh, rice and other uh, constituents for the batter after finishing her work she uh, applies the salt into that batter mixes that with uh, her own hand and during that process certain bacteria found in her hand it mixes with the batter and starts the fermentation process and usually this batter is kept uh, in at room temperature and allowed for fermentation for overnight and during that process or during the time duration the bacteria that are found in the batter slowly starts to ferment the glucose molecule or carbohydrates found in the batter and converts it into ethyl alcohol carbon dioxide and energy so during this process carbon dioxide is produced and because of that you uh, uh, i don't know whether you have noticed at home the next day that uh, batter that is stored at room temperature you will come across the batter uh, uh, pushing the lid and uh, coming out and uh, that is because of the carbon dioxide produced during fermentation and on the next day when you uh, she prepares uh, idli or dosa inside idli you find holes similarly in dosa you come across many small uh, tiny holes and all this are none other than the carbon dioxide that escapes during cooking with regard to curd where uh, a special bacterium is involved that is uh, in case of uh, bakeries or uh, breweries that i didn't uh, uh, said before that is in the production of wine okay so distilleries or other is called as breweries and thirdly in case of uh, hotels or at home where batter is prepared in all these kinds of fermentation either if it is at home the bacteria found in the mother's hand and in commercial level where you come across a fungus a unicellular fungus named yeast is added to the uh, batter which causes uh, fermentation but in case of uh, a milk curdling of milk where a bacterium named lactobacillus is involved in this process it converts the lactose found in the milk into lactic acid and that you call it as curdling of milk where the milk is converted into curd so you come across a special type of carbohydrates called a lactose in milk which is converted into lactic acid okay so hence the name of the bacterium is lactobacillus bacillus means rod shaped bacterium are called as bacillus and hence the name lactobacillus as i said before the other two conditions that is one during seed germination where the cells of the seeds since they are under the soil they may undergo seed germination to for some days till the seed properly germinates into a proper root and shoot system uh, we have uh, various experiments to prove all this but but uh, for your level i think it's not necessary so let me tell the third uh, thing that is i said before uh, uh, where in muscles in some cases when there is lack of oxygen uh, we come across uh, anaerobic respiration taking place and during this anaerobic respiration where the uh, uh, the glucose molecules are converted into lactic acid in our muscles this lactic acid is not good for our, our muscles 
so muscles are none other than cells when there is accumulation of uh, lactic acid in the muscle cells that causes muscular cramps in tamil it is called as sadai pidipu so we all might have faced this problem when we play or uh, when we do some uh, hard exercises so the reason for this muscular cramps is the accumulation of lactic acid in the mus- muscle cells and finally to finish my class today my session today one last difference between aerobic and anaerobic respiration which i didn't mentioned before that is in aerobic respiration the respiration takes place both in the cytoplasm as well as in the mitochondria of a cell whereas in anaerobic respiration with uh, this anaerobic the anaerobic respiration takes place only in the cytoplasm so there are various other differences between an aerobic and anaerobic respiration which you will learn in higher classes till then kindly wait so we'll meet again very sooner in the next section in the next session of our lesson 10 respiration in organisms be safe at home maintain all the sanitary measures that are required stay healthy be in touch with god god bless you all the best